happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Uh, yes, it's uh, the end of my vernal holidays and so much has happened in this two weeks. Um, it's quite astonishing. A number of problems that I uh, didn't go into but did mention um, sort of in October and November of last year have been sorted uh, regarding my family and everything has looks to have turned out favourably. Several members of my family have enhanced their uh, their job perspectives so to speak. Um, some of them are uh, doing extremely well with um, independent living shall we say or, or trying to uh, to go that way. Um, there have been basically a lot of things that have happened in the last two weeks that I can't really speak about in detail um, but uh, family issues have never been better um, at least not in the last sort of six to eight months um, so that's good uh, obviously there's been a lot of change as well um, uh, you know, at work I'm starting under my 7th ad, uh, th Departmental Administration. Um, that ha that changed whilst I was on holiday. Um, and uh, we have a new Pope, yes. Um, the shock resignation of uh, Benedict the Sixteenth, probably um, for health reasons, uh, has allowed Francis the First to be elected. Um, it was quite a quick conclave, and he's a not a wasn't a favourite to win. He was an Argentinian um, archbishop, made a cardinal, um, and uh, he um, has now been made pope. He is a Jesuit. In fact, he's the first Jesuit to have reached the papacy. The Jesuits, of course, being a, one of the Roman Catholic orders that. Um, all the Roman Catholic orders, or at least a lot of them, um, have tended to, in the past, uh, flourish and then be sort of um, beheaded, I suppose you could say, uh, by Rome, if they dare get too big and too impressive. Um, and the Jesuits were one such institution under Clement, uh, a pre previous pope who suppressed them, gave them suppression orders, which basically turfed them out and, and you know got rid of them um, sometimes quite violently uh, they survived because one of the um, the, the Prussian uh, monarchy refused to obey the Pope and the Jesuits lived happily in Prussia until a new Pope uh, appeared and reversed the suppression order and then they sort of reflourished but it does mean that at times the uh, the links between the Roman Curia and the Jesuits have been strained, <laughs> to say the least. And this is now a Jesuit priest, um, a monk, basically, um, as Pope. And he seems to be doing very well so far. It's early days, of course. And he has sort of, it's out of the frying pan into the fire for him, because he was elected, what, about two weeks away from Easter? Oh my God, does he know what he, do you know what I mean? Does he know what he's doing? Well, <clears throat> we'll soon find out. So everything has changed, um, and uh, all of that at the moment looks positive, which is good. Um, I have spent the first week of my holidays uh, doing administration. I had a lot of administrative tasks to do, some of which I reported to you, some of which I didn't. Um, the biggest one was what to do about the main Mark and Field window above the stairs. It really needs to be replaced because the frame is rotting. Um, it hasn't been touched in a long time because it is in a really difficult place. On one side you've got the spiral staircase and on the other side now you've got the aviary. So getting to it is a nightmare. We're hoping things are going to dry up basically. Um, it, it's, the, the rot has happened because it's old and hasn't been helped by the weather last year. If we have a dry summer we shouldn't find it, you know, getting much worse. It'll just stay the way it is. We uh, looked into getting it replaced by double glazing and 
£350 isn't bad for a window of that size. Unfortunately, the total cost would be £850 because of the scaffolding that would be needed both inside and outside uh, to get it done. Oh dear, um, that's not something so easily afforded. Uh, so we decided not to bother with that. Um, we looked into uh, whether we could get a grant for it. Um, there's a green scheme, uh, but the problem for, for, with that is you have to pay about £200 to have an assessor come round and tell you not just uh, the double glazing issues that need to, to be done to help you save energy, but everything from draft excluders to wall insulation to whatever. And then the government basically completely pay for it, but you pay them back. It's a loan. And the loan is done um, over a very long period of time and it's basically calculated by the savings you would make uh, on your energy bill uh, go to the government. And unfortunately that is secured against the house and not you. Which means that if you do this, you're tied into something for, I don't know, 20, 30 odd years. And if you want to sell, the buyers have to accept that they are buying that loan, <clears throat> continuing with that loan as well. We don't know how that's going to go. Doesn't sound very good. Doesn't sound very good. I would be off put. I have to say if I was buying a property to find that they had entered in some sort of loan scheme with their electricity and stuff that I had to then um, take on board for the next, you know, 20, 30 odd years. I don't think so. So the truth is we're not going to bother with it for a bit. We're going to see how it goes and hope it doesn't get too bad. If it does get really bad, um, we would prefer to board it up uh, originally rather than instantly replace it. It's just too expensive. I've also managed to find the HC1 forms <clears throat> that supposedly don't exist but do to help you with prescription costs and uh, dentistry costs and stuff like that and I should be sending the forms back for that very shortly and hopefully getting a, a discount um, which is fantastic uh, and that is because I'm on a low wage. Um, no, we have decided that the best route is to stick with the five year plan of which there are four prongs and we have concluded one, I'll move here to Markenfield. The second one is to get personal transport. Once we have reached the £500 limit for the savings at the moment, um, which should happen within the next two months, it, definitely by June, uh, we will move on to saving um, <clears throat> for personal transport and we're going to go for the moped because um, you can do everything uh, within about £500 including buying the, the bike, the whole gear and also the training needed. Um, it's also obviously very low in terms of road tax um, and fuel and stuff like that. It takes about a year for me to raise that amount of money uh, so starting in sort of May, June, we'll be ready to go uh, May, June the following year, um, which is fine. Uh, and so we should have, have get, got that completed by the end of uh, 2014. Well, hey. Um, so that's the route that we are going down at the moment. I have to say that I am going to drop the savings from £80 to £50 pounds to create a buffer zone because... Um, unexpected payments last um, uh, year at the end with Christmas took us into the red and we can't afford to do that. If I uh, save the £50 rather than the £80, that extra money is going to provide a buffer zone which eventually I can sap once it's large enough. But it just means that if there are any unexpected payments, um, you know, like the bird fare for example, which was fine, we, we are still well within budget despite how much we've paid for that, um, then, uh, then yeah, uh, we should be alright. Um, so that's the plan moving forward, basically. Um, it's looking, things are looking good. I've had a good holiday. I did the bird show uh, the first week. I did administration. I did a few to the ends of the world, uh, to the ends of the earth productions, although not as many as I'd liked, mainly because of the bad weather. Um, 
And I did a trip to Scarborough, which was an absolute disaster. I loved it, but I forgot my camera, so <laughs> may, may as well have not existed. Um, but it was nice to be able to do something without you for once. <laughs>